this, people always say it can't be done. And when you were that kid in Austria saying you want to go to America to be the greatest bodybuilder ever, I'm sure there was naysayers. How did you rise above that and stay true to yourself and confident in your dream? And so many people said, no, you should get a job in the snowfield or marry Heidi and you know, work in the factory here in France. You had to overcome that from your parents, your teachers, your educators, everybody said, stop dreaming so big, so what's it? Go back to school and concentrate. What do you say to that? Well, I mean, first of all, you're absolutely correct. I remember that there wasn't one single thing that I've ever done where people didn't say that's impossible or no or forget about it. Uh, I, I think the naysayers are always there. And I think that the bigger the course gets, the more you have people come out and say it's impossible, it won't happen. And I, I remember that uh, uh, I always said to myself, I, if I see it, then I believe it and I will achieve it. And uh, so I didn't listen to the naysayers. I remember bodybuilding with my, my friends and even my, my teachers and coaches in the school said to me, says, look, bodybuilding is an American sport. You would never win. It's an American sport. The Americans are really uh, dominating the sport and then you have no chance. If you want to be a champion, you know, go ski and be a ski champion or be an ice skating champion or be a motorcycle uh, racing champion or be a bicycle champion or be a swim champion or something like that. But don't try to be a bodybuilding champion. And, uh, you know, it's, it's impossible. And of course, like I said, five years later, I won the Mr. Universe title. And the same thing is also when I came to Hollywood and I said, I want to now have to retire from bodybuilding, I want to get into movies, and I want to be a leading man. They immediately said, this can't be done. I remember that every agent, every uh, manager, every studio executive said, it's impossible, especially A, your body is too big. They said, you look like a monster compared to this other actors. And uh, they said, you know, that, that you, 10 years ago, did the Turkish movies, but now, this is not anymore the kind of body that they're looking for. Look at Dustin Hoffman. He's now the sex symbol of the 70s. And uh, Al Pacino is the sex symbol of the 70s. Or oh, Woody Allen, yeah, that's a sexy guy. Yeah, I mean, he is a sex symbol of the 70s. I mean, those are the kind of little, little guys that they mentioned to me that they, they were really hot in those days. There's no two ways about that. But I felt like that doesn't mean that there's no room for me. I mean, uh, I just have to carve out a niche for myself and really climb that ladder. And I was willing to do all the work, and I just said to myself, you know, I'm not going to listen to the naysayers there. I'm just going to do what I did in bodybuilding, which is I work five hours a day really hard. So I took accent from classes, English classes, and speech classes, acting classes. And I went through all of the different things and did exactly the same as in bodybuilding. I just worked that butt off. And then eventually it happened, you know, I started getting little parts and then bigger parts. And then all of a sudden I landed this great role as Conan the Barbarian. And uh, there I was with a big international movie that was uh, produced by Universal Studio by Dina De Laurentiis, who was in those days one of the biggest producers in the world. And, uh, you know, and the movie was the number one movie when it came out in 1982. And so it launched my career. And from then it just went up and skyrocketed. And uh, I never looked back and I never worried about what the naysayers said. I had my vision and I went after that. And I, 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 